Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes present The Big Story. It's sweet, baby. Oh, man, ain't that hot. Yeah? Hey, baby, you ain't got your mind on it. Come on, we dancing or what? Oh, listen to it. Don't that send you? Don't that just get Stop. you? That's him. Right there, sitting there. See him? He's getting up now. Stop that man. Stop him. He killed my best friend. That man wanted for murder. That's him. Get him. Stop him. <laughs> The Big Story. Here is America, its sound and its fury, its joy and its sorrow, as faithfully reported by the men and women of the great American newspapers. <laughs> Richmond, Virginia. The story of a murder, and of a man convicted for that murder who became the bitterest man on earth. For his contribution, not only in writing a great story, but in reaffirming a great truth that every person on earth is a human being and has a right to human dignity, to reporter Julian C. Hausman of the Richmond, Virginia News Leader, for his big story, goes the Pell-Mell Award. <laughs> Guard against throat scratch. Enjoy smooth smoking. Pell-Mell's greater length of traditionally fine tobaccos travels the smoke further, filters the smoke, and makes it mild. Puff by puff. You're always ahead when you smoke Pell-Mell. At the first puff, Pell-Mell smoke is filtered further than that of any other leading cigarette. Moreover, after five puffs, or ten, or fifteen, or seventeen, Pell-Mell still gives you a longer filter of fine tobaccos to guard against throat scratch. For Pell-Mell's greater length travels the smoke further on its way to your throat, filters it naturally, through Pell-Mell's traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos. Guards against throat scratch. Yes, Pell-Mell's fine tobaccos give you a smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Guard against throat scratch. Enjoy smooth smoking. Ask for the longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell-Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. <laughs> Now, the story as it actually happened. Reporter Julian Hausman's story as he lived it. Richmond, Virginia. It began with a letter from a woman in Harlem at 2581 St. Nicholas Avenue, New York, to the postmaster at Brodnax in Mecklenburg County, Virginia. Dear Mr. Dawson, sir, I got to make myself known to you, and maybe you remember me, Daniel Green's daughter, Mamie. Now, name of Goodwin since I'm married. I hope you'll not think me being forward to write, sir, Mr. Dawson, but my son, Jamie, got himself in trouble. He's in Richmond in the Henry Coe County Jail, accused of murder and sentenced to 40 year hard labor. Now, the man who did that crime is named Arthur Tenney. And some swears my Jamie is that Arthur Tenney, which he is not. He is my son and never murdered no one. Now, Mr. Dawson, you know my family. When I worked for your wife 20 years ago and then moved from Broad Axe to New York and Jamie come with me, he never killed no one. But I can't come and prove it. So would you please, sir, get in touch with the sheriff, Mr. Ray, and tell them that Jamie ain't this Arthur Tenney and help him get off? I'll be so grateful, Mr. Dawson, sir, and thank you in advance. Your humble servants, Mamie Grain Goodwin. It began for you, Julian Hausman, reporter for the Richmond News Leader, when Postmaster Dawson of Brodnax happened to have some business in Richmond. Happened to have a spare half hour and happened by accident to walk into the newspaper office. 
Mr. Houseman? Yeah, that's right. The name's Dawson, postmaster in Broadnax. I got something here might be of interest. The girl outside it says that you handle this kind of thing. Uh, what is it, a crime story? I well, don't know if it's any kind of story, just a letter I got. Old woman I used to know 20-odd years ago up Mecklenburg County, where Broadnax is. They used to do washing for my wife. Well, uh, I'm on a story right now, Mr. Dawson. Well, that's and, uh... all right. I won't take your time. Just why don't I leave a letter and you think it's anything, well, go ahead and do what you like. If not, I guess the wastebasket's good a place as any place. Three hours later, after you've finished work, you read the letter. It moves you strongly. The woman's plight, her dependence on Dawson, the helplessness in every line. Could it be as she had written? You call Sheriff Jeff Ray, a good friend, out at Henrico County Prison. Then there's nothing in it, Jeff, about his being Goodwin and not Tenney? No, nothing. I had that boy in jail one day six years ago, right after he killed his wife. He escaped that first day, but I remember him. Well, couldn't you compare his prints? <laughs> now, I'll tell you a little secret, Julian. I never did get a chance to take his prints. I was going to do that second morning, but uh, found if he didn't escape that night. But we got him now, had a fair trial, got convicted, and <laughs> that's that. Now, Julian, he, he ain't pulling the wool over your eyes now, is he? With that story of being someone else? Hello? Julian, you hear me? Yeah, I, I hear you, Jeff. No, he isn't. Not so long. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Houseman. My name's Jamie Goodwin, but what's the difference? Ain't nobody gonna believe me. Ain't nobody care. Well, what proof do you have? Proof? What's that proof? I say who I am. I got papers from the Merchant Marine. Jury say that's Arthur Tenney, 40 years hard labor. That's your proof. And you're not Arthur Tenney. You're Jamie Goodwin? Oh, mister, please, go on away. Who cares if a backwards boy like me live or die? Go on away and leave me be. For a moment, you think, oh, what's the difference? And then you stop. He's a man, isn't he? A human being with the same hopes and desires and fears as you or anyone else. And you think, suppose I spend a little time on this, find out. You start with Bertha Jarvis, the girl who identified him. I was up in New York visiting friends. We went dancing, and that's where I saw him, Tenny. You sure it was Tenny? Sure, I'm sure. How'd you know? His wife was my girlfriend. I grew up with her, my best friend. He promised to love, honor, and cherish her. Steady killed her. She was a good girl, Marie. And he's bad. How I know? Well, Marie's dead. That's how I know. <laughs> You're Marie's mother? Who are you? I'm a reporter. Uh, Tenny was your son-in-law, right? I got nothing to say about him. Except they should have electrocuted him not to give him 40 years. You identified him at the trial? Sure. Saying his name is Goodwin. I ain't Tenny, I Goodwin. Liar. Know what a liar that boy was? Come here and look. What's that? Barbara, look at here. Wrote on the inside. To my darling sweetheart Marie. Give it to her. Same day he killed her. That's how bad he was. Sure, there couldn't be any mistake? I swore in the courtroom and I'll put my hand on this book now. God's my witness that boy in jail killed my daughter. God's my witness. You wonder about him now. Jamie Goodwin or Arthur Tenney. You wonder, but you go on. Other witnesses say the same. And then after searching a week, you find the Tenney family, a woman sick in bed who can't talk, and a bent old man who listens to your mission and shakes his head. He's my son, but I don't want to talk about him. But you weren't at the trial, were you, Mr. Tenney? You didn't see him. What I want to see. Boy disgraced his family. Mister, since he done that six years ago, his mama and me ain't been out of this house. Living disgrace, that's all. Don't want to talk about him. 
But this man may not be your son. Killed his wife. That's all I know. Uh, maybe he didn't do it. I don't say your son didn't kill his wife. I say maybe this man isn't your son. What do you want me to do? Come down to the jail. See him. You may be able to set an innocent man free. You wouldn't want an innocent man to pay for your son's crime, would you? Well, enough trouble in the world without some poor boy paying for something my son done. I'll go. You know this man, Jamie? No, sir. Never seen him before in my life. Well, Mr. Tenney? Mr. Tenney? This is Arthur Tenney's father. Well? Well, it, it looked like him. Talk like him. Even stand like Arthur. Look enough to be him, uh, or else his twin. Mm, but he ain't my son. He's somebody else. <laughs> about his men sentenced in Enrico County Jail for murder as Arthur Tenney says that's not his name. Read all about it. Get your paper. You set down the facts as you got them. The assertions and the denials. And the next morning, you get a call. The Commonwealth's attorney, George Ballas, the man who tried the case, tells you to come in. Tells you you'd better come in. That's a great story you wrote. Great public service. Well, what's the matter, Mr. Ballas? You think I try cases and send men to prison for 40 years for the fun of it? I don't. But I wrote that... Suppose you listen, Houseman, and I talk. Eight witnesses and a sheriff of this county identified this man as Tenney. One witness, the man's father, and of course the man himself, say he's not Tenney. Now ask yourself this. Does the Tenney family stand again by lying? Does Tenney stand again by sticking to his story that he's Goodwin? Of course. But I saw them together, Tenney's father and... I saw Bertha Jarvis and the murdered girl's mother and all the rest. Now, suppose you were accused of being someone you're not. Could you prove who you were? Would it be so difficult? Now, what about the papers from the Merchant Marine? Look, I walk into a shipping office in New York and say my name is Goodwin. Do they ask for proof? No. They issue papers in the name of Goodwin. Does that make me good one? No. Oh, I, I see all that, but... There are no buts. No ifs or ands or buts. That boy raised the noise that he was good one in court. We proved who he was. Now, if he hadn't raised that doubt that he was someone else, he'd have been sentenced to death, not 40 years. Instead of an innocent man being unjustly jailed, I tell you, a guilty man has gotten off easy. You think that? I know it. Now, why don't you go back to your paper and write the second part of that story? That Tenny is Tenny. No ifs, ands, or buts. No. I can't do that, Mr. Ballas. I can't because, after all you've said and all the other witnesses have said, I, I think I'm right. I think I can prove that Jamie Goodwin is not the murderer. Guard against throat scratch. Enjoy smooth smoking. Palmel's greater length of traditionally fine tobaccos travels the smoke further, filters the smoke, and makes it mild. Puff by puff, you're always ahead when you smoke Palmel. At the first puff, Palmel smoke is filtered further than that of any other leading cigarette. Moreover, after five puffs, or ten, or fifteen, or seventeen, Palmel still gives you a longer filter of fine tobaccos. To guard against throat scratch. For Pell-Mell's greater length travels the smoke further on its way to your throat. Filters it naturally through Pell-Mell's traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos. Guards against throat scratch. Yes, Pell-Mell's fine tobaccos give you a smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Guard against throat scratch. Enjoy smooth smoking. Ask for the longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell-Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. This is Cy Harris, returning you to your narrator and the big story of Julian Hausman as he lived it and wrote it. The facts seem all against you, Julian Hausman. 
reporter for the Richmond News Leader. Witnesses swear that the man who says he's Jamie Goodwin is really Arthur Tenney, murderer. The sheriff says so. Commonwealth's attorney, Ballas, insists so. And all you have to go on is the word of the man himself, the murderer's father, and your own stubborn belief. You go back to Henrico County Jail, to the innocent man or the murderer, and talk. Jamie, I, I need to know more. I've got to know more about you. Now, you've got to talk to me. What for, Mr. Hausman? Uh, don't sit there like that. So we can free you. Don't you want to get out of prison? Don't I want to get out? Don't I want to breathe? Look, mister, you've been good, real good, taking time, but nobody cares what happens to me. That old man say I wasn't his son. Anybody listen to him? The sheriff listen? Mr. Ballas, he listen? No. Oh, what's a good... I tell you, if we can get proof, you can be free. No. They put me away. They treat me good in here, and I ain't complaining. Food's good and all like that. But they put me away, and they ain't gonna bother taking me out. I tell you, you're wrong. Ballas is an honest man. I ain't say he's not honest. I... Oh, mister, look. I want to get out. Get in the sun. Get on a ship, maybe. See a girl. Get married. Have kids. Sure. Sure, I want that. But I ain't gonna let you come in here and stir up my hopes and maybe get me to think that that's what I'm gonna have. I ain't gonna let you do that. I'm gonna rot in here and ain't nothing you nor nobody in the whole world can do to help me. That's why I say leave me alone, please. I, I'm begging you. Leave me alone. Don't mess me up and then dash me down more harder than before. Well, you're wrong, Jamie. You're wrong. How can I make you believe you're wrong? Jamie, I'm going to write a story about what you just told me. Maybe somebody will read it and come forward and say who you really are. What else should I say in that story? I told you all I'm going to say. You asked who cares. I care, Jamie, and I think others will care when they hear your story. Do you? For true, honest? For true, Jamie. All right. Say this. Jamie Goodwin's got a bad name. Jamie Goodwin robbed a car and stole money for food... But he didn't kill no woman. He didn't kill no wife. He never was married. Say that. Say, if he got married, he'd treat his woman right. That ain't gonna help, maybe, but that's the truth. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Hosman. Say that... Say, Jamie Goodman worked lots of places. Broadnax, Detroit, Baltimore, Boston. There must be some folks knew him. Must be one man somewhere stop what he'd do and take a day out and come down here to prove I ain't no murderer. Prove I'm just plain Jamie Goodwin. Read your story, mister. Thought maybe I knew that man you wrote about. Two years ago, lent him $75. He paid me back, to. Here's the notice sign. See? Jamie Goodwin. Maybe you can use that. Uh, I just come from the jail, Mr. Hausman, uh, where I saw that man. The man they say is Arthur Tinney. Funny. I remember when I talked to Tinney, uh, knew him years ago, uh, used to have to look up to that man. Tall. This one I uh, didn't have to look up to. Now, he must have grown shorter, because I ain't grown no taller. Uh, unless, of course, uh, like I think, he ain't Arthur Tinney but someone else. You a houseman? That's right. My name's C.B. Sega. I'm a planter up Broadnecks Way. You had an article in the paper. I read it. I spoke to the postmaster in our town about this Goodwin Tenney fella. Says, come see you. So here I am. Well, what do you think about it? Thinking something I don't go in for much. Theory is. I tell you what I believe in. I believe in facts. I lived in Broadnecks all my life, know everyone. Man worked for me, name a good one years back. Maybe that's the boy you got in jail here. If it is, I'll prove it. I'll ask that boy six questions about Broadnecks. He answers them, he's good one. He don't, let him stay in jail. Now, I ain't got all day, let's go. Uh, stand still, you men. What's this? What you got all these men here for? Uh, can you pick out 
one you ever saw before, Mr. Sager. Uh, testing me, eh? Well, I'll be... Sure. There he is. You. You're Goodwin, right? Yes. <laughs> testing me. All right, the rest of you men can go. Now, Jamie, this man is... Uh, let me here. do the talking, son. Okay. Now, look at me, Jamie. Who am I? I remember you, sir, but I... You, Mr. Sager. That's right. Now, where am I from? By Broadnax, sir. When did you last see me? Uh, let me see. I... Seven years ago, sir, last July. Why did you say July? Because <laughs> when you fired me July the 1st, and then, then you hired me back July the 4th. Says you was being patriotic about hiring... Never mind, never mind. What's my brother-in-law's name? Your brother-in-law? Well, that's the doctor. Dr. Payne. What did he tell you last time he saw you? He said, I, I think it was the last time. He says, don't you go walking on no more roofs, because next time you fall off, you might, might not be lucky and just break one leg. That's him, that's him, that's Jamie Goodwin. No serious facts, I swear. For heck, I don't need to swear. Now, Jamie, when they let you out, you come on back to Broadnecks. I got a good job waiting. But it's not so simple. There are eight witnesses and a sheriff to shake. There's a decision of a judge and a jury to reverse. And there's a an attorney, Ballas, the Commonwealth attorney. You bring the new information to him. He looks it over, listens, then says... I take back some of what I said, Houseman. Your story was not irresponsible. Thank you. I take back some of what I said. There's still the testimony of eight yeah, witnesses. I know, I know. But you think, nevertheless, that this information warrants a new trial? Yes, Mr. Ballas, I do. What do you think? Hosman, I want you to know I'll fight you. I mean you and Tenney or Goodwin and his attorney. I'll fight you with all I've got. You know, I'm a funny duck. I'm one of those throwbacks to another period when people had a sense of duty and a sense of honesty. If you win this case, you'll know you've been in a fight. You'll get a new trial. <laughs> As the Lord's my witness, Judge, that man sitting right over there was married to my girlfriend, Marie. That man is Arthur Tenney. I swear he killed my daughter, that Tenney. I swear he don't deserve to live. <laughs> Yes, sir, Mr. Lawyer, I, I respects what that foreman said about Marie. And I ain't forgetting Marie was my daughter-in-law. But that man sitting there ain't my son. He looked like him, all right, but he ain't my boy. My name's Sager. I say any man answer my six questions way that boy done, I know he's who I say he is. He's Jamie Goodwin. I'm the boy's mother, sir. Yes, sir, no matter what I say, I know few people ain't gonna think I ain't sticking up for my son. I is. But I say this. How come that poor woman on the stand whose daughter got killed don't know me? How come the man who say he's Arthur Tinney's father never seen me before? If I is the mother of this man, then they is my kinfolks. And how come my kinfolks don't know me? The reason is, he's Jamie Goodman. That's why. <laughs> I am a handwriting expert. I've testified in many trials in professional capacity, including the Lindbergh case. I have also examined a sheet of paper torn from a Bible on which Arthur Tenney wrote a few words. I have also examined a note, admittedly signed by Jamie Goodwin. In my honest and positive opinion, the possibility of Tenney writing like Goodwin, or Goodwin writing like Tenney, is so highly unlikely that it becomes almost a practical certainty that they are very different people. In short, that's Goodwin, Your Honor, not Tenney. Jay 
me, Goodwin. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Case dismissed. Sir? You're free, Jamie. You're free. <clears throat> Please, Mr. Hausman, a little respect for the dignity of this court. Jamie Goodwin, you are free. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Mr. Hausman. You don't have to say anything, Jamie. I, I got it somehow. I got to thank you. You see, I, I, I learned that people does care. People like you and the postmaster from Broadnax and Mr. Sager. Yes, Mr. Ballas, too. Them folks on the other side, they care, too. What's true counts with folks, don't it? That's right. And see, Mr. Hausman, something like something else, too. I, I, I mean, something I learned. If, if you believe in something... You don't put your head down and say, no, that can't be. You put your face up and fight for what you believe. If you do that, people care, because they see that you care. And that's what this show now, ain't it, Mr. Hosman? That's what it shows, Jamie. That's just what it shows. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll read you a telegram from Julian C. Hausman of the Richmond, Virginia News Leader with the final outcome of tonight's big story. <laughs> Guards against throat scratch. Enjoy smooth smoking. Palmel's greater length of traditionally fine tobaccos travels the smoke further, filters the smoke, and makes it mild. Puff by puff, you're always ahead when you smoke Palmel. At the first puff, Palmel smoke is filtered further than that of any other leading cigarette. Moreover, after five puffs, or ten, or fifteen, or seventeen, Palmel still gives you a longer filter of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos to guard against throat scratch. Yes, Palmel's fine tobaccos give you a smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Guard against throat scratch. Enjoy smooth smoking. Ask for the longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. <laughs> Now we read you that telegram from Julian C. Hausman of the Richmond, Virginia News Leader. Day after trial, Goodwin visited the paper and said, I just wanted to come to the people who got me out of this jam. I needed assistance, and it's to the news leader that I owe my freedom. Authorities are still searching for the actual murderer in tonight's big story. Uh, thanks a lot for tonight's Pell Mell Award. Thank you, Mr. Hausman. The makers of Pell Mell famous cigarettes are proud to present you the Pell Mell $500 Award for notable service in the field of journalism. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes will present another big story. A big story from the front pages of the Columbus, Ohio Dispatch. Byline, Bill Foley. A big story about a phantom killer and a reporter who didn't believe in ghosts. The Big Story is produced by Bernard J. Proctor with music by Vladimir Selinsky. Tonight's program was written by Arnold Pearl. Your narrator was Bob Sloan. John Sylvester played the part of Julian C. Hausman, and Canada Lee played Jamie. In order to protect the names of people actually involved in tonight's authentic Big Story, the names of all characters in the dramatization were changed with the exception of the reporter, Mr. Hausman. <laughs> This is Ernest Chappell speaking for the makers of Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.